Hello friends, my name is Kristen. This is going to be your 35 minute yoga for athletes. Today we're focusing on those tight hip flexors. I will be cueing with blocks as an option. You don't necessarily need them. Don't forget to follow us. Push on notifications so you can see our upcoming classes. And now let's get started on our mats. Okay, friends, we will start in a child's pose today. So come on down to your knees, tops of your feet are flat, your sit bones are over your heels, and then just hinge at the hips, walk your arms long, deliver your forehead down, whether it be to the mat, to a block, whatever ever feels right for you here. But find length through your spine, keep your sit bones down, and take a nice deep breath in, breathing in, filling up the back side of the rib cage. And exhale, let it go. Now thinking of those tight hip flexors, we start just a little rock side to side, just kind of warming up the hip joint, getting some joint fluid moving to soften so that we can do our work today. Our hips get nice and tight, whether it be from our workout, from lots of sitting, whether it be at a desk or in a car. So we want to lengthen. We'll do a lot of hip extension. Let's come to center and take a nice big breath in here. And exhale, just let yourself sink a little bit lower. And on the next inhale, just talk yourself forward and come all the way down to your belly. So bring your knees back in so your legs are nice and long and even here and come all the way down to your belly. Now, your inner thighs are spiraling upwards to keep your legs in alignment and we'll take that right heel and bring it in toward our glute. Bring your right hand around so the thumb is down and grab for the top of the foot bending at the elbow and friends make sure you're bending and keeping that elbow pointing up toward the ceiling to get a nice opening through your shoulder as well and breathe in as you pull gently that heel in toward your glutes we're warming up that quad because getting into the hip flexors we're going to be doing a lot of hip extension, and that means stretching through the quads as well. Now, you can keep your forehead down, or you can bring that left forearm parallel to the top of the mat and find a little support here. Whatever feels good, but inhale here. Those quads also get really tight, so take some time, gentle hold here, breathe in. Exhale, let it go, but keep the hold. Part of the quad is part of the hip flexor series of muscles, so we want to loosen and gently warm up your quad here. Inhale, one more. And exhale without slingshotting it. Gently let go and bring your leg back down. Take your right hand parallel to the top of the mat or bring your forehead back down. Now we'll do it on the other side. So bring that left heel in toward your glute and then send that left arm back and around and grab for the top of your foot and gently draw that heel in toward your glute by bending the elbow up toward the ceiling and you'll see by keeping that elbow in you're opening up through the shoulder blade feels good might as well get into those shoulders too inhale here and exhale out again you can be on your forearm or if you're more comfortable come back down bring your forehead right to your forearm on the mat let's take one more big breath in here breathe in Starting to feel the quads warm up, loosen up, exhale. And then gently, without letting go too fast or slingshotting, let go with your hand. Gently bring that foot back down and bring your hands right in front of you by your shoulder blades here. Inhale. 
And on the exhale, curl your toes under and lift yourself up onto your knees. And now walk yourself back. Your sit bones are going to come onto those heels. I'm taking just a moment here to stretch out the bottom of the feet to give them a little bit of love. So sitting those sit bones on the heels, your toes are curled under. Inhale, slide the shoulder blades back and down. And exhale, let it go. And now come forward onto your hands. Bring your tops of your feet down. And you can bring those sit bones right back on the heels again. And walk your hands back. Your fingers can be forward. Plant your hands firmly on the ground. Slide the shoulder blades together. And on the inhale, push into the mat and balloon up through your chest. Blossom up through your chest, drawing the shoulder blades together. Inhale here, maybe you drop your head back, getting a nice stretch through the pecs, through the collarbones. And exhale, let it go. We'll take one more here. We're gonna add a little quad stretch into this. So on the next inhale, this time, lift your sitting bones up press into the mat, balloon up through the collarbones, draw your head back, getting a further stretch through those quads as we get our collarbones, our pecs, our shoulders. Nice breathing. And exhale, let it all go. Bring the sit bones down, walk your feet back up. Now we'll take a hero's pose. You can use a block for this. Um, or maybe you're ready to not use a block. So what I want you to do is bring your feet out and then you're going to draw your sit bones down and kind of snuggle them in between the heels. Now this can be awfully uncomfortable for some people, so that's why I recommended the block. If that's not in your range of motion, you bring a block at whatever setting you need right under your sit bones. I want you to think about keeping your pelvis in neutral your belly, a soft engagement there. Always working the core, right? Slide the shoulder blades back. So you're either here supported or you're down here in your hero's pose, okay? Once you arrive, sitting up tall, that firmness through the belly, inhale here. And exhale out. If you want to add a little heat to your practice, you can add that ujjayi breath. So breathing in, softly sealing your lips, and on the exhale with a slight constriction in the back of your throat, you exhale through your nose. You'll hear that oceanic sound. It builds a little heat through your body. So inhale here and exhale. And we'll take two more breaths here, yogis, and feel free in your hero's pose to start playing with your range of motion. Maybe you walk your hands back, coming to your forearms. Maybe you're ready to come a little bit further, coming all the way down onto your back. Very carefully, you know your range of motion. You'll feel this intensity through your quads. Again, we're getting into those quads opening through those hip flexors. Inhale here. And exhale out. Take two more breaths. That ujjayi breath helps you Commit to the pose, soften into it, send the breath, the places that you want to relax and lengthen. Inhale, one more big breath in. And exhale out. Now, if you're all the way on your back, draw your forearms underneath you to slowly guide yourself up. If you have a block underneath you, you slide that block out, come forward, draw your sit bones back up onto your heels, and just sit up tall. Nice, tall seat on our, on our heels. Tops of our feet are flat. Draw the shoulder blades back and down. Inhale, come back to center. 
and exhale out. Let's find our tabletop. So coming onto all fours, our shoulder blades are right over the wrists, our hips are right over our knees. We'll take a couple of cat cows here to warm up the spine. Inhale, sink the belly. Lift through the top of your head, gazing forward, lift through your tail. And on the exhale, round your spine, draw your tail down and your head down, making that C cat-like shape. And just take about two more cat cows here. I always say add in any other movements that feel like they're calling to you here. Such a great warm up for the spine. Also for those core muscles and a great way to connect our breath to movement. Inhale for cow and exhale round the back for cat. And now come back to a firm table and firm up through your belly. Take your right arm and lift it nice and long. Now take your left leg out long, reaching here. And on the exhale, draw your left heel in toward your glute. And now reach that right arm around so the thumb is down, grabbing for the top of the foot. And once you get a hold of it, inhale here and kick the top of your foot into your palm finding this tiger variation in tabletop, getting a nice extension through the hip, again, working the shoulder, getting into that quad muscle, breathing in here, find firmness through your standing left arm, a soft, softest micro bend in the elbow so you don't lock it out, keep your hips in neutral, and find a long neck, breathe in here, and exhale, just give it a relax for a moment. And one more time, inhale, kick the top of the foot into that palm. Breathe in as you rise. And exhale, let it go. Softly and gently come back to your table. Take one neutralizing cat cow here. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat, rounding the back. Let's go to the other side. Come back to your neutral table. Fire up through the core. This time you'll send your left arm forward and your right leg nice and long. So find that link through your tip of your finger to the tip of your toes. Inhale here. And on the exhale, heel comes to the glute. And this time that left arm comes around, grabbing for the top of the foot. Right. Once you find that engagement, gently draw that heel in toward the glute. Inhale and kick your foot into your palm and feel yourself rising up, getting that nice hip flexor stretch. Stretch through the shoulder, through the quad, inhaling and exhale. Gently just relax it. Let's take one more. Inhale, kick that foot into the palm and rise. Pressing the foot into the hand, the hand back. Remembering that softest micro bend through the right elbow, keeping your hips nice and neutral and your neck nice and long. Inhale here. And exhale, gently let go. No slingshotting, just bring everything back down into your table. One more neutralizing cat cow here. Exhale for cat, cat, and then let's curl our toes under and find a downward facing dog. Lifting your hips up nice and high, drawing your belly in, lifting those hips to the ceiling, softening your chest toward your thighs, finding length through your side bodies, and then draw your heels down to a point that feels good for you and pedal it out. You can have a big bend, a little bend in the knees. Let's take a minute here to warm up the calves, the back side of our legs, inhaling, exhaling, just feeling all the beautiful benefits of a good down dog. Nice, and when you're ready, come to a place of stillness. Now breathe in and lift that right leg nice and high. Keep your hips in a neutral position. Bend the knee in, and now I want you to open your hips toward the right side of the room and find a couple circles as if you're drawing with your knee. Your knee is a marker. We're just getting those hips warmed up again, the joints, the fluids going, keeping very 
connected to our mat through our arms. Our shoulders are still nice and steady. And then inhale, find that three-legged dog again. So bring those hips into neutral, a flex through the foot. Right leg is lifted, shoulders are in neutral. Inhale here, and on the exhale, deliver that right foot between your hands. And now draw your knee down to the ground, top of the foot down to the ground, and find our kneeling warrior. So I want your knee directly over the ankle, your hips in neutral, and you can find a little tuck back and forth, getting into that left hip flexor, really extending it here. And keeping that tone in the belly again, as we feel that stretch. Just breathing into this. This is an awesome stretch to do throughout the day when you're starting to feel tight. And then come back to a place of stillness. Remembering knee is over the ankle. Let's inhale and reach our arms high, keeping the shoulder blades down. And as you reach your arms, be mindful that you're not dumping your belly forward, right? You keep that engagement through your torso and you're using your glutes to keep your hips in neutral. Inhale here. And on the exhale, let's draw our hands behind us, weave our fingers together, and then gently bring them down, opening up through your heart. Nice little heart opener here, taking that hip extension a little bit further, breathing in. Oh, that feels amazing. Exhale, come back to center. Let's lift our arms one more time. Inhale here. Pinkies are forward, shoulders down, biceps by the ears. Exhale. Plant your hands. Now listen up, yogis. Bring your hands inside of that right foot. So scooch that right foot over to the side of the mat. This is, again, where you might want to use a block. And then press through the hands. Curl the back toe. Lift that left leg off the ground. Or you can keep the knee down. But let's start here and come into a lizard lunge. So you've got that wide stance. Your right foot's over on the edge. And this is where a block comes in handy. You can come to your forearms on the block. You can come down to your forearms on the mat, just depending on where your range of motion is. And like I said, if you want to bring that knee down, that's fine. Or stay up on your toe. And we'll just hold here for a nice dip, dip, deep hip opener. So stay here, breathing into it. Find that ujjayi breath again. You may even want to find a little rock pressing back through the heel and then find that place of stillness. Inhale. And exhale out. We'll stay here for two more breaths. Breathing into the stretch. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. And one more big breath in here. And a nice exhale out. Beautiful. Now come to your palms. If you had a block, release it. Scooch that right foot back in so that your right foot is surrounded by your palms. You're here. Inhale, send the right leg back, find a high plank, and just come to a solid high plank. So push back through the heels, press up through the shoulder blades, that little spot between them, engage through the core, find length in your neck, and hold here. We're going to lower down onto our bellies nice and slow. Might as well get some strength through the arms. So tuck yourself forward slightly and then draw the elbow straight back as you come down nice and slow all the way to your belly. And once you arrive, tops of your feet are flat. You want to keep the rotation of your legs in neutral so those inner thighs are spiraling up toward the ceiling. Your pinky toes are down. Bring your forehead to the mat. And then draw your palms down to your low ribs. Tuck your elbows in. Press into the tops of your feet. Engage through your quads. Inhale and rise for a baby cobra. Slide the shoulder blades back. Peer out over your nose. And exhale, let it go. Let's do that two more times. Another great thing to work on when you have tight hip flexors is 
making all of the surrounding supporting muscles nice and strong. So we're working the back, we're working the glutes. Inhale again for baby cobra. This time maybe you lift your palms up off the mat using the back side of the body. And exhale, come on down. And we'll take one more here, keeping those knees in, pressing firmly into the tops of the feet, engaging through the quads. Inhale, rise, third baby cobra, lift and exhale let it go bring those hands palms back by your shoulders curl the toes under rise through high plank and find your down dog and find that length pedal it out and let's go to the other side so we lift that left leg nice and high keep the hips in neutral and now bend the knee open here i'll spin around open so that your hips face the left side of the room, opening your hips up, keeping engagement through your core, through your shoulders, bend the knee, find some hip circles here, one way and then the other. This should feel really good. And then come back to center, square your hips off, three-legged dog, inhale here and on the exhale, deliver that left foot through, drop the right knee and find your kneeling warrior. Drop the top of the foot, knee stays stacked over the ankle, lift. And first, let's just start with our hands on that knee, getting into that right hip this time. It's extended. But again, we're not dumping and losing our core work. So we're staying strong through our core. You're using your glutes to keep your hips in neutral. Working here. So just a little talk back and forth. And then come to a place of center. Feel that connection. That front heel is energetically drawn toward that back knee, scissoring the inner thighs so that you feel so strong and connected. And when you do kind of give that little tug of the back knee, you'll feel a deeper stretch in your right hip flexor. So you may want to try that again on the other side. Now this time, let's inhale here, bring the arms up nice and high. And on the exhale, draw those hands behind us again, weave those fingertips together and draw the hands down, blossom up through the chest and just find a little heart opener here. We're going to work into some postures that add heart opening, hip extension. So this is a nice warm up, breathe in. Ah, exhale, bring the hands down, curl the back toe. We're going into lizard on this side. So this time that left foot scooches all the way over. Hands both come in. You can rise through that back leg, press through the toe, push the heel back, come firmly shoulders over wrists, slight micro bend in the elbows. You can stay here. You can come down to your forearms you can come to a block. Find your lizard lunge. I just want you to really feel this in your hips. And we'll stay here for a couple of breaths, yogis. Make sure you keep your neck nice and long. I'm correcting myself here. So don't drop your head down. Kind of gaze out over the nose. Find some length through your neck. Breathe in. And make adjustments throughout these couple of breaths here. If you want to drop the knee for a minute, sure, go for it. You don't have to be like picture perfect. Feel it the way it should feel in your body. You know how it should feel. Every body feels different, so be intuitive. Inhale here. And exhale out. And one more big breath in. And exhale, let it go. And if you had a block, remove it. Scoot your foot back to center. Frame it by your hands. You're now in a low lunge. Inhale here. On the exhale, find that high plank. Set yourself up in that beautiful high plank. Feel your strength looking out over your nose, your neck nice and long. And let's build on our strength by breathing in here and then bending the elbows to graze along our low ribs. We slowly come all the way down to our bellies. And once we arrive, this time we'll, we'll work into a locust pose with bound fingers. So bring your forehead down to the ground. Tops of your feet are flat. Bring your hands behind you. Weave your fingers together. 
Inhale here as you draw your fingers toward your heels. And on the exhale, rise, lifting your legs, lifting up through your chest, peering out over your nose as you draw those knit fingers toward your heels. Keep your inner thighs spiraling upwards. Your pinky toes are down to keep that neutral position through the legs. Inhale here. Exhale, lower down. And just relax everything. We're going to go into floor bow now, getting that ultra extension through the hips, opening through the shoulders, heart opening. It's going to feel amazing. So forehead is down. Draw both of your heels in. Reach your arms around for the tops of your feet or your ankles. The goal is to keep the knees tracking back. So I want you to draw your shoulder blades back. Okay. And inhaling here. And on the exhale, we rise, kicking your tops of your feet into your palms as you rise up. Finding that Dhanurasana, that floor bow, keeping your knees tracking straight. Inhale here. Exhale, come all the way down. Let it go. Take a little tick-tock. Windshield wipe through your hips. We'll do it one more time. Coming back to center, drawing your knees straight back, legs in neutral, and then heels coming in toward the glutes, reaching around, finding the tops of your feet, grabbing a hold, inhaling here, drawing the shoulder blades together, opening through the collarbones on the exhale, lift, pressing your feet into your hands. Maybe you get a little higher this time. And exhale, just let it go. Draw your hands by your shoulders, press into your knees, tops of your feet are flat. Send your hip bones back, your sit bones back, and let's find a child's pose. Take your sit bones over the heels. Find that rock and roll like we did in the beginning of class. Okay, yogis, from here, let's rise up into a downward facing dog. Find that length. Inhale, lift the right leg high. Keep the hips in neutral. On the exhale, half pigeon. So you bring that right knee toward the right elbow and then draw that shin toward the top of your mat and bring your hips straight down. Now you want to find those hips nice and equal. Maybe draw your hands back to find a little length through your torso first. Your left leg is nice and long. Inhale here. And on the exhale, fold over that front right leg and find your sleeping pigeon. Keeping your hips nice and neutral. Remember to keep your left hip down. We have a tendency to roll open, so keep it down. Keep your ankle tracking right over your knee. And now they say in half pigeon, you know, a lot of times you hear that cue to parallel your shin to the top of the mat. But our hips and the way that our femur fits into our hip socket is different for everybody. So you want to feel comfortable in your sleeping pigeon. Just make sure that your alignment through your ankle, your knee, everything is aligned. And then work to keep those sit bones down nice and equal. And then relax through your arms. Maybe your head is on a block, your forehead, or maybe it's on a blanket, but we'll take a few breaths here. Top of the left foot is down. Inhale. And exhale. Find another big inhale, sending that beautiful breath to those places that you want to soften. Getting those outer hips and exhale. Stay with the breath, yogis. Again, if you can find that ujjayi breath, that textured breath, it actually helps you kind of get deeper into the pose, helps you kind of meditate in this 
state sending warmth and energy to those places that you're looking to relax. One more breath, yogis. Breathe in. And a big, beautiful exhale out. And then draw your hands by your shoulders. Lift yourself up in your pigeon. Curl your back toe under. Rise. Take a three-legged dog and just shake that right leg out. Maybe you take a couple more hip circles. Circle through your ankle. And let's go to the other side. So coming back down into your down dog, lift that left leg nice and high. Breathe in. Exhale. Find your pigeon on this side and setting up with as much care. Again, you know your body, so feel into it, keeping both of your hip bones down equally, press into the palms and lift for a moment, finding that hip flexor extension, that stretch, and on the exhale, walk your hands forward for sleeping pigeon. Again, a block is always nice here if you want to bring your head to a block, letting your arms just hang naturally. See what you need on this side. I'm going to scoop myself down here and snuggle down into it. So just square off those hips. Your right leg is long, top of the foot is down. And we'll find some breaths on this side. I am right there with you, yogis. I have not been stretching at all today, so coming into this for this video, I am tight. So we'll stay with it here for one more nice big breath in and at home. Feel what you're feeling and send energy to those places that you want to lengthen and soften. And exhale out. And then draw your hands back underneath your shoulders. Lift yourself up. Find one nice big stretch here. And then curl the back toe under and find your three-legged dog, sending that left leg nice and high. We have time for just one more asana, one more shape in our practice today, and then we'll come into our... Shavasana. We're going to go into camel, pulling this all together. We've done great heart openers. We've worked the shoulders, extended through the hips. So we're going to bring it all together in a beautiful camel pose. So come onto your shins. You can curl your toes under or keep your, your feet flat. Depends on your range of motion. Firm through the belly. Draw your hands behind you as if they're going into back pockets. Now those elbows are going straight back like we did in our cobra. And right here, we take a big breath in, and as if you your nose is a marker, you're going to rainbow your head back, pressing through your hips a little bit forward, finding your range of motion. If it's in your range of motion, start to bring your hands to your heels. If they can connect, go for it. And then find that beautiful hip extension, heart opener, draw your head back. And take one more breath here. And lengthening those hip flexor muscles. And then with as much care, yogis, first bring your hands back to your back pockets to support your low back as you bring yourself forward. And then slowly bring your sit bones down to your heels. Tops of your feet are flat. And before we move any further, because we've had our heads upside down, we take just a moment here. Roll the shoulders, come back to your breath. You can soften your gaze or close your eyes or look straight ahead. Just a moment to kind of come back to center. 
Always though, don't let your pelvis dump forward. Everybody check in. Keep that pelvis in neutral. Use your core. Inhale here. And exhale out. Okay, that's all we have time for. So let's finish it in Shavasana. I'll set you up and then I'm going to head on out and you, I hope, stay here. So we'll take a supported butterfly or Supta Baddha Konasana. So bring the soles of your feet together. We bow out through our knees. I'm going to use blocks. You could use blankets or a pillow and roll back with that block right at the base of your shoulder blades moving upward. And then if you want, you can bring another block under your head right here and then to your arms out. So we're getting still opening through the heart, the shoulders and finishing off with the opening through our hips. And this is where we'll end our practice today in this supported um, supine butterfly or Supta Baddha Konasana. So inhale here. And exhale out. Wonderful. That's all we have time for today, yogis. I hope you enjoyed this 35-minute hip flexor um, lengthening and strengthening. So take care. Hey, where are you going? There are more videos, so check us out. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We'll see you on your mat. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on push notifications so you know when our next workout posts.